Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can collide a mesh with another one based on the gravity. And at the end, we can uh, produce this draping mesh in Rhino and use it in our project. For those who uh, want to take this tutorial further, we have also recorded another lesson, which is going to convert the mesh into a weaving pattern, which is going to be a second lesson for the Paracourse members. You can check down the link below for more information. And also a third lesson for the Paracourse members, which they can bring the mesh in towards a curve, as you can see here. And by changing the radius, which I'm going to explain, convert that into a final mesh. This is also available for Paracourse members. Okay, let's get started from scratch and learn how to collide two series of mesh based on gravity step by step. Uh, so what I want to do here in Rhino is draw a surface. I'm going to go here and draw a rectangular surface, uh, bring this a little bit up. So this is going to come down towards the gravity and collide with another mesh. Uh, let's go to the params menu, geometry and pick up the surface, right click and set one surface. And we will have this inside grasshopper. Uh, we can also internalize this if we want to have the file. So we just uh, delete the Rhino geometry. Okay. Uh, before we go and use the kangaroo plugin, we're going to use the kangaroo plugin for this one. Uh, what we have to do here is uh, I'm going to use a main bouncy solver. The uh, good thing about bouncy solver is that you can see uh, the deformation in real time and animation like things. So I think the bouncy solver is great. And we're going to use that in this project. Okay. Uh, first of all, because we're using kangaroo, we have to convert this surface into a mesh. Uh, I'm going to go to mesh utility and use a mesh surface, which you can easily convert the base nerve surface into a mesh. Let's hit control M so you can see the edges or you can go to display preview mesh edge on. Uh, now we have to define the UV count. So I'm going to say from three to maybe 20 and just control C, control V that, so we can control the number of division of U and V. Uh, the more we have UV divisions, obviously the resolution is going to be better. So we're going to use that as the base mesh. Uh, another thing I'm going to use here is the show. I usually start a kangaroo with the show component because it's going to help us to uh, have the mesh as the first output and then just filter that out at the end. Another thing we usually do is use a button for the reset. This is the reset. And also an on. So we're going to use a toggle. And that means that do you want to run the simulation or not? So this is going to also help us to turn it on and off. And this is going to reset the simulation. You can see that's converging because we don't have any other goals than just a mesh. And because this is like the first output, I'm going to filter that out later. Okay. The next thing is uh, actually here is the goals mesh. And I'm going to use the edge length component which I really love that because it's going to convert the mesh into a like a physical thing because it's going to convert each of these edges uh, into a series of springs. And because I don't want this to deform and contract to really small because they can become really small or become big uh, based on this length factor, I can say that it's just one. And I'm going to use the shift key to add it to the goal object, flatten this. So everything is going to go to the goal object. You can also use a merge to just clean the goals. So I can say the first goal and the second goal and just give that to the goal object. Okay. So we can just add other goals to this merge component. Uh, the strength input is also important for now. I'm going to just say it's like one, but we're going to increase that later because the multiplication of these goals is also important to get best results. So now we have this one. Let's just go for the next goal and I'm going to use uh, if I run this simulation, you can see that it's nothing in happening. But before we go forward, the output here, you can see that it's a mesh and a series of lines because we have given it the uh, mesh edge length component. We just need the first output. So I'm going to go to the set list item and pick up the first output, which is the mesh and just turn off everything. So this is going to be the final output uh, of the bouncy solver. 
Another thing I want to do is to bring down this mesh. Uh, you can use the goals mesh uh, and actually here vertex loads and add this to the goals. You can see that's going to fall down. And another thing we can also go to goals point floor and say that the XY plane is the floor. You can see that's going to fall down on the ground. Uh, later when we want to find the collisions this one is going to slow down the process so what i usually prefer to do when you see that the kangaroo solver is really slowing down instead of using this vertex load what you have to do is this uh, more uh, generic load you have here and this is faster because it's going to affect each point and put it down so i'm going to use this load the points i want to assign the load is the mesh vertices uh, mesh deconstruct mesh and give this all of these vertices to the point it's going it's going to give us a uh, minus z force here you can see it's like zero zero one which means it's going to go up if i add this as a force you can see it's going to go up so what we have to do here is obviously give this a z and a minus one. So now it's falling down. We'll just turn off the vertices. And now we have uh, a faster results in com compared to that uh, vertex load, which I explained here. Okay. Another thing we need here is the goals collision. And I'm going to use the solid point collide. So let's just use that. This is also another load we want to add here. And the points it's going to affect is the vertices of the mesh. And now let's just make a solid that it's going to intersect. You can use anything here. You can use a series of boxes, maybe just united to one. And as you can see here, it's going to get B rep or mesh. So I can say geometry geometry so I can select both the B reps or um, mesh let's see where is the surface it's a little bit intersecting here so I'm going to just bring that a little bit up and internalize this okay and uh, we just give that to the force. Let's just go and simulate it. Okay, you can see that something is happening here, but it doesn't give us the good results we want. Uh, what I prefer to do the, uh, here is to use a mesh. So if you want to just convert that into a mesh. And also there is a strength here, which I've explained for here. It's like one. Two of things that are really important for this example is the edge length and the solid point collides. So I'm going to say this is like 1000 times important and this one is like 50. I found this uh, multiplications like the best results you can get. So just play around with the multiplication of edge length and uh, point collide and see which one works best. Okay. And you can see that's working. If I give this geometry, it's going to work also. But it's faster to just use a mesh. Just convert that into a mesh. Or what you, you want to do here, if you have a surface, let me explain this also. Uh, assume that you have a surface here. Let's rebuild this and use a soft edit surface to deform it. I'm going to use a 50. Okay, not bad. Okay, if I use a surface, this is not going to work. As you can see here, it has to be something with a thickness. Okay, so what you can do here uh, is either using the Pufferfish plugin, like for the surface, you can use this fast offset surface component and give it a thickness. Uh, 
or if you want to, as you can see here, the NURB stuff is not really that good. It's just bringing down that. Instead of that, you can also use a mesh component. Uh, you can go to the Pufferfish, Mesh, and Offset Mesh. Simply give the NURB surface to that. It's going to convert it into a mesh and just give it a thickness. You can see it's going to give you better results, but I'm going to solve this with another goal, which I'm going to explain here. Uh, okay, uh, another goal we're going to use here is uh, make this uh, a little bit stiffened uh, and just don't rely on the edge length. So what I want to do here is to, uh, I love this uh, goal, it's also in the collision menu, goals collide and sphere collide. Uh, what you can do with meshes is that you use that vertices we have here and use that as the points for a series of spheres that are colliding and let's give this a radius maybe from 0 to 20 and just add this as the goal and what you have to do here if you want to see uh, the spheres you can go to the mesh deconstruct the mesh after the simulation get the vertices and use a mesh sphere on the vertices and give it the same radius that you have in the sphere collide goal okay turn this off this is going to give you a like a stiffened mesh so if I just increase that and run the simulation it's really cool because it's going to not let those spheres collide and give you a better results for the mesh that's really important so if I increase that you can see that it's going to open up the mesh and make it more stiff just turn this off turn it on and here you can see that this is going to give you a better mesh in comparison without the sphere collide component so remember that you can always combine the edge length uh, with the sphere collide you don't need strength here because it's going to anyway collide but if you increase that to maybe 10 times you can see that's going to open up so remember that this number is also going to affect the final result and you just make it smaller it's like this and if you want to make it stiffer you just increase that okay so that's uh, how you can make the draping mesh using the bouncy solver and get the final results with this list item uh, i'm going to save this file so you can download it from our website if you want to get started really fast then just use this file okay now that you have learned how to make the drape we're going to talk about uh, creating a weaving pattern on the mesh and also playing with a curve and how we can use that to design some sort of this mesh, which is really cool. We can just use uh, more goals to create this final results. So if you want to enroll in a para course or learn these uh, step by step also, uh, you can check out the link below. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to like this video, share it with your friends. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions about the algorithm. See you next time. Bye.